വെൽക്കം ടു ഐ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ എ ഫോർട്ടി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് മെയിൽ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ടു ദ ഇയർ വിത്ത് അലീസ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് സ്നേക്ക് ബൈറ്റ് അറ്റ് അറൗണ്ട് സെവൻ പി എം ടു ദ ഇയർ ഓൺ ഓഫ് ഇനിഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ഒബെയിൻ കമാൻഡ്സ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ദ പ്രൈമറി സർവേ എയർ വേ വാസ് പെയ്റ്റൻറ്റ് നോ പൂളിങ് ഓഫ് സെക്രീഷൻ നോ ഹോഴ്സ്നസ് ഓഫ് വോയിസ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ബ്രീത്തിങ് എയർ ഇൻട്രി ബയോലാറ്ററി ഈക്വൽ റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് ട്വൻറ്റി ഫോർ പെർ മിനിറ്റ് സാച്ചുറേഷൻ ഓഫ് നയൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇൻ റൂം എയർ കമ്മിങ് ടു സർക്കുലേഷൻ ബി പി ഓഫ് വൺ തേർട്ടി ബാർ എയ്റ്റി മില്ലിമീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മെർക്കുറി ഓൾ പെറിഫറൽ പൾസസ് ഈക്വലി പാൽപ്പബിൾ കമ്മിങ് ടു ഡിസബിലിറ്റി ജി സി എസ് ഓഫ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബയോലാറ്ററൽ പ്യൂപ്പിൾ ഈക്വലി റിയാക്ടിംഗ് ടു ലൈറ്റ് കമ്മിങ് ടു എക്സ്പോഷർ വി വർ ഏബിൾ ടു സി ടു ഫാങ് മാർക്സ് വിത്ത് സീറോ പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർ എപ്പാർട്ട് ഓൺ ദ ലിറ്റിൽ ടോ നോ ഓൺ ഗോയിങ് സ്വെല്ലിംഗ് ഓർ ബ്ലീഡിംഗ് വർ നോട്ടഡ് കമ്മിങ് ടു അഡ്ജൻസ് ഓഫ് പ്രൈമറി സർവേ വി ടു ക്യാൻ വി ബി ജി വി ഷോ നോ അക്യൂട് ആസിഡ് ബേസ് അബ് നോർമാലിറ്റീസ് ക്രിയാറ്റിൻ വാസ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് സീറോ വൺ സീറോ പൊട്ടാസ്യം ഓഫ് ത്രീ പോയിൻറ്റ് എയ്റ്റ് കമ്മിങ് ടു സെക്കൻഡറി സർവേ എ ഫോർട്ടി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് at what time he came and within half hour the patient arrived to the okay. hospital suppose if you know somebody got bitten by a snake so what should be the first action uh, the first aid is like the mnemonic will be uh, mm. do it right mm. that is uh, we have to uh, reassure the patient first to decrease the anxiety because anxiety can uh, trigger uh, increase heart rate that can again trigger the uh, rate of envenomation mm. uh, then we will immobilize the limb uh, basically using a splint mm. uh because a little bit walk or the foot movement can trigger the mus- calf muscles to contract that again increases the spread of venom circulation uh, then take the patient immediately to the hospital and tell to the doctor mm. about the details so in adjuncts to primary survey what should be done for the patient ideally uh, you have to initially reassure the patient we need to reassure we need to immobilize the, the patient. patient then we have already taken the history so where did he get the bite from uh on the uh, left little toe no at uh, what was he de- uh, doing uh, he was he was uh, out of his house going to the back here yeah. there was full of grasses and suddenly he had noticed something biting on the left okay so it was outside, outside. the house what if the snake bite was inside the house what uh, how can we differentiate the snake with their location uh nocturnal mostly outside uh, snake it can be Uh, cobras and crates okay uh, which all are the big big five snakes uh, the big five snakes are uh, common cobra common mm. crate mm. russell's viper so mm. scale viper and latest we added also the have no spit viper also mm. so and uh, which all have asv uh the big four we have asv mm. no spit viper we do not have uh, so it will not cover hum no spit okay. viper okay and crate is having a tendency to bite inside the house it will be mostly coming inside the house in between the clothes and all it will be there and even though it bites persons we won't be knowing that it has bitten okay and uh, cobra uh, and uh, russell vipers and all usually bites outside the house and there will be fang marks and all and it will be painful also so crate bites won't be known so if it is like outside the house mostly it will be uh, you told some grass everything mostly it will be viper or cobra okay so which all are um, dif- uh, depending on the toxin effects how will you classify the snake bites uh, there are neurotoxic and hemotoxic and both neurotoxic and hemotoxic mm. snakes are there mm. uh, neurotoxic can be uh, then one more is there hemotoxic Mot- neurotoxic and myotoxic myotoxic is c snake okay mm. Uh, neurotoxic uh, common cobra and uh, common crate mm. uh, hemotoxic are vipers and russell's viper is both neurotoxic and mm. hemotoxic okay in neurotoxic we told there is cobra and crate so which is presynaptic which is postsynaptic mm, presynaptic is crate postsynaptic is cobra. cobra okay so why the difference uh, wh- any importance for that Mm. because uh, post pre synaptic means even though we are giving anti venoms and all it will take act, uh, time to act so pre synaptic that response will be slow post synaptic somewhat fast response will be there so if we know the snake and if there is envenomation features and if we are planning to give asv if it's pre synaptic we should anticipate a late response okay
Okay. And so, uh, at Jinx, we uh, ideally we should immobilize the patient. We should reassure the patient. And if uh, then, what else can be done? Along with immobilization, will we apply tourniquet? No, we don't apply. If suppose tourniquet. patient is coming with a tight tourniquet, what will you do? Uh, we need to put a uh, BP cuff above yeah. the level of tourniquet weight and inflate up to above the level of systolic blood pressure, or approximately around one fifty. Mm. Then slowly uh, remove the bandage, mm. and then. Uh, Why are you removing it slowly? Uh, rapid removal can lead to rapid. Uh, gush of gush venom, of, if at all yeah. it is there. Okay, and so. Mm. Slowly remove the tourniquet at the rate of ten uh, mm Hg in over ten each ten minutes decrease by ten mm Hg. Okay, so slow this thing should be done, and we uh, if they are asking whether to do suction something and all, will you be doing or uh, some incision and all? No, no. These no, things are contraindicated. No, no, no. Okay, so immobilize the limb. Then what can be done? Uh, We are not using any tourniquet or anything. What can be bandage, done? Bandage. Bandage. So, how will you apply from up to down or down to up? Down to. Down to should be applied. Okay. Then what next in that jinx? So we have immobilized. We have um, written the history. We have noted the wound. Then. We need to uh, monitor the wound. It Initially the itself, when the patient comes, we need to know whether it is hemotoxic or neonatoxic, whether the uh, venom effect has started in the patient. So for that, we need to okay mark the wound, mark the wound, and we need to see if it is increasing or not. Then and look for other systemic symptoms. Mm. You to we you anyway took a VBG. Anyway, you are pricking the patient. With that, what else will you take? Uh, CBC, CRP can be taken. Uh, no, we need RFT can be taken. No, no. For hemotoxic PTNR, first one is PTNR. INR will vary first. So PTNR is the one of the most important investigation. So we need to take an INR, but INR has to be even though we have point of care INR facility in our ER, that will not match or that will not correlate correctly with our uh, snake bite INR. So we are not supposed to rely on that. So we will have to send a lab INR, which will take. Uh, two hours. Two hours to come. So what we should do? We should take bedside. Uh, what can you do? Twenty minute uh, wall blood clotting time. Ah, uh, how so can you, how will you do that? Uh, dry it uh, ideally in sunlight. The uh, dry mm. freeze uh, test tube. You okay. will take two ml of water and uh, blood, mm. and then we will uh, un without shaking the tube. We will monitor for twenty minutes, mm. and ideally it should clot within twenty minutes. If it is did not clot within twenty minutes, then there is indicates that there is hypofibrinogenic DAC. Chances are that. Okay. It's an indication for AS. Okay. Um, so uh, usually, uh, when we are taking, we need to take a vial, uh, either a vial or test tube, which is dried under the sun, and there should not be any sediments or precipitate of the previously used medicine in that. If anything is there, it will, um, it will not clot. So it should be two ml of blood should be taken and should be kept undisturbed for twenty minutes, and then you should uh, see whether it is clotting or not. If it is clotting, it, we are safe. If you are not clotting, if it is not clotting, then when will you repeat? Uh, every twenty minutes we have to. Each twenty minutes, mm. one twenty minute over. Then mm. we have to, every half hourly we need to repeat. So wait for ten minutes, then again take the sample mm. and do it. Okay. Then for assessing the whether the patient is having neurotoxic effect, what should be checked? Uh, we will look for uh, in VBG. We will look for the level of PCO two and mm. other tests we can use like. Uh, breath test single mm. breath test can be mm. taken if there is a decrease or worsening of single breath test mm. indicates that there is respiratory involvement mm. so uh, initially we need to so in the adjuncts to primary survey initially itself we have to uh, or in the primary survey itself we will have to take a single breath test and we will have to uh, document that then we will have to reassess each time so how will you ask the patient to do single breath test Uh, ideally, we will ask this patient to speak normally and take a normal mm. inspiration, and then ask to count the numbers normally mm. in a single breath. Mm. And ideally, uh, till what number? So numerical number numbers, numbers, one, numbers. two maximum mm. numbers. Okay. Um. Then we will repeat the uh, same scenario after uh, frequent intervals, okay. and there is a worsening of these numbers. Like initially it was twenty, then coming to fifteen, ten, like that. That indicates that there is a respiratory involvement. Okay. 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 Next. Uh, then coming to uh, secondary survey, a forty-year-old man presented to the ER at around seven thirty p.m. with an allergic history of snake bite. Within half hour of the incident, the patient was brought to the ER. Uh, 
The incident happened when he was went out of the house to his backyard, which was surrounded by full of grass. Suddenly, he noticed something uh, beating on the left little toe. Uh, but uh, due to the lack of light, he was not able to visualize the snake or the uh, correct organism. Uh, immediately, he was uh, called for help, and the bystanders came and tied a tourniquet and uh, brought the patient to the ER. Uh, no history of any uh, tosses, uh, no local swellings, no bleeding, uh, no external ophthalmoplegia, no facial weakness, no abdominal pain or vomiting, no myalgia, no uh, other associated symptoms were present. No history of any allergies, uh, no history of any drug intake in the past. Last meal was around 3 p.m. Uh, coming to examination, local examination. Okay. Uh, so, um, that was a history. So, uh, uh, if the patient is having some neurotoxic envenomation, what will be the first clinic? Uh, patient won't be telling that I am having ophthalmoplegia, I am having ptosis. So, what will be the first symptom patient will be? Having lids not able to uh, they will be mostly having diplopia. They okay. will be telling that Abuse. I am seeing things Abuse. as two Abuse. things. Okay, so the diplopia will be one of the uh, tosis and ophthalmoplegia in history wise we won't be mm. getting this. Diplopia might be the complaint. Okay, um, so uh, based on the syndromes, which are, are the syndromes, syndromic approach? Uh, basically, uh, five syndromic mm. approaches are there. Uh, first syndrome is like there is local bleeding plus uh, local swelling, then it indicates. Uh, Viper species. Uh, syndrome 2 is like there is local bleeding, uh, local swelling, and also there is renal failure and shock. That indicates uh, it's also viper and also hypnospit viper more specifically. Syndrome 3 is hypnospit viper uh, more specifically. Then uh, in syndrome 3, there is local envenomation plus ptosis, uh, external ophthalmoplegia, and facial weakness. That indicates there is a neurotoxic involvement, uh, most commonly uh, king cobra. Uh, in syndrome 4, uh, there is paralysis, percent plus or minus abdominal pain. And ideally, the bite uh, taken in the uh, water, water lake or any sea, indicating of sea snake. Uh, in syndrome 5, uh, there is paralysis and there is renal failure and brownish uh, discoloration of the urine and the uh, uh, bite take place in the land, then it indicates of uh, Russell's viper. These are the five syndromes. <coughs> when you're telling about crate, there won't be, sometimes only there will be fang marks yes. because the fang is very small and it is as equal as our needle. So, there might not be any fang marks. Uh, why is the patient having hematuria? Due to rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis yes. and DAC, yes. which, uh, which both can cause amateur. Okay. Uh, if suppose we are getting a patient with hypnose pit viper bite, um, what can be done for the patient if uh, there is features of emanation? Uh, ideally, the patient might go into renal failure, oh. so we can start the patient uh, on dialysis. Uh, dialysis can, can be, be done, done and based on the patient's symptoms, symptoms. If, if coagulopathy is there, that can also be correct. And okay. So, uh, what all are the pathophysiology in a snake bite? What will happen in a snake bite? So, why is this patient having DIC? Uh, the uh, snake venom contains 90% uh, mm. proteins, but mm. it also contains uh, hydrolase, uh, hyaluronidase, and uh, zinc metalloprotease, which mm. disrupts the endothelium. Mm. And there is also uh, factors uh, that promotes DAC uh, and also procoagulants, procoagulants are, are there, and there is a uh, phospholipase A2, which is a sedative, is there. Mm. Uh, so, these causes disruption of the endothelium and the progeny factors will cause these. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, then what happened? Uh, then, local examination inspection uh, two fang marks were visible uh, on the little toe on the left side, separated by 0 0.5 cm. Uh, no ongoing bleeding, swelling, bluish discoloration were noted. Uh, coming to palpation, no lo local rise of temperature, no swelling, no edema, uh, peripheral pulses were equally palpable, no palpable lymph nodes were also noted. Uh, coming Which to are lymph nodes did you check? Uh, we can look for the femoral mm. lymph nodes. Mm. Popliteal and inguinal lymph nodes. Lymph nodes. Mm. Uh, systemic examination, uh, respiratory system, there were no open vesicular breath sounds, no added sounds further. Uh, CVS, S1, S2 percent, no murmurs. What is most important in the respiratory system? Respiratory rate. Right. Respiratory rate and respiratory efforts are the most important in a, when we are telling a, a snake bite case. Okay. Uh, 
ജി ഐ ടി അപ്ഡൗൺ വാസ് സോഫ്റ്റ് നോൺ ഡൺ ആൻഡ് ബൗൾ സൗണ്ട്സ് ഫോർ പ്രസൻറ്റ് സീനിയസ് എക്സാമിനേഷൻ നോ ടോസസ് നോ എക്സൺ ഓഫ് തലമോ പ്ലേജിയ നോ വീക്ക്നെസ് ജി സി എസ് വാസ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ സിംഗിൾ ബ്രത്ത് കൗണ്ട് വാസ് ട്വൻറ്റി ആൻഡ് വി റിപ്പീറ്റഡ് റിയാസസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഓൾസോ ട്വൻറ്റി സോ വി വാസ് സസ്പെക്ടിങ് ഇസ് ടു ബേ ഡ്രൈ ബൈറ്റ് വിതൗട്ട് കോസിങ് എനി So, uh, when will you, um, what are the indications of giving an ASV and his snake venom? Uh, there is fang marks plus local swelling plus mm-hmm. uh, lymphadenitis or tender lymph nodes are present. Mm-hmm. Then there is hemostatic abnormal. Or bleeding, bleeding, bleeding from the mark. Mm-hmm. And hemostatic abnormalities like uh, uh, PTINR elevated. Mm-hmm. And elevated up to? Uh, more than 1.5. More than 1.2 INR. Uh, then uh, neurological abnormalities like ptosis, external ophthalmoplegia, facial weakness. Mm. Then there is hypotension, shock and uh, cardiac arrhythmias. Mm. Then elevated that creatinine kinase. That comes in usually hemotoxic animation. Then ah. there is elevated creatinine kinase, potassium, mm. uh, myoglobinuria. Mm. Such features are ram- features of rhamdomyolysis and DIC are present. Mm. We can give uh, anti-snake venom. Okay. neurotoxic uh, features also if at all there will get okay so uh, what is the dose of asv uh, asv actually uh, in the highest uh, cases in russell's viper that is uh, 143 mg of poison uh, so ideally we start with 6 to 10 vials uh, 1 ml of uh, anti snake venom will neutralize 0.6 mg of uh, russell viper poison mm. so ideally we will start with 6 to 10 vials that will neutralize at around uh, 63 mg which is the average dose uh, we can give up to 25 to 30 vials each vial is uh, mixed with 10 ml of distilled water or uh, normal saline so and one vial should be added right. with uh, 10 ml of this thing okay so mine and uh, correspond if you are taking 10 vials then 10 vials has to be given in uh, next one hour okay okay before that we need to take consent because why because there can be chance of anaphylaxis in okay. the patient we need to tell the patient and the bystanders that there is a feature of envenomation and there is chances of anaphylaxis and reaction to the um, asv so we need to take explain and take consent and then only go with the procedure okay will you give a test dose for asv No, we don't give testosterone for AS. Okay, so yeah. that itself can cause an allergic reaction. reaction. So we are not giving that, and we will be giving ASV. Okay, suppose the patient develop allergy or anaphylaxis to ASV. How will you treat? Uh, we can give injection Avil or hydrocode. Continue with the ASV. We can temporarily stop okay. ASV. Uh, Avil and hydrocode is only for articular reaction. If patients develop anaphylaxis, we will have to give adrenaline. Treat with adrenaline, and uh, if at all the patient is uh, stabilizing, then you continue with the ASV. Okay. Uh, so what are uh, what are the causes of hypotension in a case of snake bite? Uh, most common cause can be the anxiety that causing vasovagal attack, mm. and there can be myocarditis, sepsis, septic shock. Uh, that the, is late mm. uh, then there is pituitary and adrenal hemorrhages mm. that can cause mm. uh, anaphylactic shock anaphylactic shock cardiogenic shock Cardiogen. can be there and hypovolemic shock mm. also can be there okay uh, so suppose you have given asv to a patient and the patient um, so I- you saw the patient's initial inr was 1.5 range and you have given asv and uh, when will you repeat the next uh, blood values R- when will you repeat the ptnr and all? if if this patient's how was the ptnr everything it was within normal normal limits. limits so when will you repeat next Six hours. Every six change. hours you will be repeating uh, because every six hours uh, yeah, the coagulant factors will be produce. replenished. So you have given ASP to a patient. When will you repeat? When will you repeat? Uh, the next PTINR result. After one hour? No, after six hours. Six hours. Because it will replenish only after six hours. Six hours. Uh, so we uh, suppose you are seeing a patient uh, but you are confused you uh, you are you are giving 20 vials of asv so you are confused whether to wait for the next 6 hours to give the next 10 vials so uh, wh- what will you how will you decide whether to repeat asv before that 6 hours still the symptoms are mm, worsening of the symptoms like increased swelling uh, if there is still uh, a shock not shock 
uh, if there is still bleeding or if there is still neurotoxic uh, features and all don't wait for the 6 hour value you can anyway repeat ASV okay um, okay so uh, what are the chances of recurrence of uh, envenomation uh, what are the causes of that one thing is the patient is in shock and the, uh, after giving ASV mm. the patient improves then there is increased circulation mm. proposal that can again trigger so anyway uh, 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 venom also will circulate so that can mm. cause recurrence then then there can be redistribution from the tissue side to the other sides mm. then initially the anti snake venom that neutralizes mm. and later it gets dislodged and also so the that means uh, inadequate ASV, ASV. Mm. And the bite site act as a depot site and there can be continued absorption from the bite site. That can also trigger. Okay. Uh, when will you tell that the ASV has failed? Uh, despite of our maximum vials, the patient does not respond to symptoms will not get improved. If we are not giving adequate dose, ASV will fail. If the ASV uh, is inact ineffective, it will fail. And if we are giving a very late ASV also it will fail okay then uh, resistance to ASV yes. nowadays some snakes are having resistance to ASV so that can also happen then what happened to this patient uh, the patient INR was within normal limits we monitor INR every year six hourly mm. and uh, the RFT uh, VBG single breath count everything came out to be normal mm. so we discharge the patient after uh, 24 to 48 hours okay um, suppose a patient is having snake bite, which all are the late complications will you anticipate? Uh, late complications can be there, can be chronic kidney injury, can mm. be there, uh, chronic neurological abnormalities, can be there, chronic psychological issues like post traumatic stress disorder, depressions can be there, there can be uh, osteomyelitis, can be there, uh, there can be uh, chronic ulcers, <coughs> can develop chronic swellings, keloid, like scars can be there. And she hands on Okay. Uh, what are the indications of dialysis in a snake bite case? Uh, ideally, Russell's fiber can cause renal failure that can lead to oliguria and uh, elevated creatine. That mm. can indication for dialysis, remic pericarditis, <laughs> remic encephalopathy, fluid overload can all lead to indication for dialysis. Dialysis. Okay. Um, if suppose a patient is coming uh, with the neurotoxic features, okay, and uh, if the patient is not responding to our ASV, what adjuncts can be given? Uh, we can ideally, uh, in the case of neurotoxic cases, there can be respiratory arrest. So mm. take the patient to the uh, give the support of mechanical ventilation. Mm. So air airway, airway should be secured, should be secured and secured. mechanical ventilation. Yes. Then. Uh, then in case of uh, circulatory involvement, like. Uh, there is uh, hypertension, we can start the patient on inotropic supports. Mm, that is in hemotoxic. Mm, okay. Mm. No, uh, other than ASV, in case of neurotoxic. Neostigmine can be. Uh, Neostigmine and ah, okay. Ah, okay. So, what is the dose? Neostigmine. Adult okay. doses 0 0.02 mg per kg yes. and children 0 0.04 mg per kg. Neostigmine also can be given. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you.